G'day, Harry Houdini here and I am back with the A4B Skyhawk from Airfix. Now, I haven't done a lot, but um, I've been doing some little things like um, marking out the panel lines and also adding some missing bits that um, I didn't put on before I started painting. So I'll do some close-ups now and show you exactly what I've been up to. What I discovered when I was um, um, starting to put on what I thought were just the undercarriage parts is there are a couple of things missing under here. It's a bit, uh, bit bright there. Okay, there's, um, there's two little parts here, which um, although you think you're finished in um, step 12, it sort of feels like, oh, you've got the whole thing together, you can put some paint on. Well, no, you can't really. If you want to paint, as I wanted to before I started adding all the ancillaries, step 21 has got these two little pieces here, which I think are for the aerodynamics, that sit behind the, uh, the sections there where the wheels go in. So you need those on, and also if you jump all the way, practically the end, step 25, there's um, these tiny little pieces here as well, that, um, and there's also one here, I think, here on, 20, yeah, on step 24, and they go in the front of the wings there with the cannons, as far as I can tell, there's little cannons there. But I mean, there's no reason you can't put them in now with the cannons in later. And similarly, back here with, um, with step 21, I can't see any reason why you can't put these little parts in, and um, that allows you then to do what I wanted to do, which was basically get, give this a lick of paint. So those guys have gone in and I had to um, respray and these are the front little pieces here. But this also gave me an opportunity to have a look at uh, the panel lights. Um, and I noticed, well I knew from the last video because I hadn't scored, rescored the panel lines on the top here um, after doing the sanding. In fact, what I wanted to do was get a lick of paint on so I could see if they're needed to be any more um, Mr. Surfacer or Putty to go in there and if I needed to resand. Well, luckily, actually it all came up beautiful. So I could have I could have scribed the um, the panel lines straight away, but I just wanted to see. But anyhow, when it came to um, scribing my panel lines, I uh, don't have a scriber and it's been a lot of years since I've done anything like that. And I hadn't really had the need to do that on any of the uh, warships or tanks. Oh, a little bit of stuff on the um, on, on the grass spade, but I think I just used a knife. So I sort of thought, what have I got that's pointy and hold? And you know what? This is what I came up with. Do you know what that is? Do you know? That's a corn cob holder. Yes, it is. But this one was broken and it was in my throwaway section, actually, after it moved in and sorted out the kitchen. This was sort of, I was going to ditch this because it's missing a prong. And then I realised this might be a perfect little scriber. And it turns out, well, at least for me, it is because it's, you know, it's really good to hold. Um, I can sharpen that point to as fine or as blunt as I want and I was able to very easily um, with the with a rule, you know the trick you scribe before. Oh everyone scribed haven't they? If you haven't scribed, you know you get your rule, you lay it very carefully across where you want to go and you very carefully lightly scribe that line gently at first and then once you've got a little bit scored you can drag it to the depth that you want. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of you how-to videos out there and you can have a look at that. But look, you know, scribing, you just need something pointy and you're going to make some lines. But um, I don't know how well that's going to show up. I've, um, I've rescribed all the lines there as best as I can tell from the photos that I have and the lovely detailed drawings Airfix provides. So they've been redone and, um, and my parts are in at the front and uh, those parts are in there. So I also went and rescribed uh, at the bottom as well because I noticed here because some of the joins I'd uh, sanded, especially around the nose, because I'd done a lot of work on that nose to get it all nice and smooth. So I, I scored as many as I could. I avoided, there's a little scribe line that should go in right here on the tip of the nose, but look, there is no way with my fumbly fingers I'm going to get the rule on there and scribe that without it being wobbly and an almighty mess. So I kind of stopped about, um, where did I get to? There's probably one about here. And that's as, that's about as far as I get with that nose. And that's, you know, that, that's that's my skill level and that's where I stop. And, you know, and, and I reckon that's, that's the same for anybody. You know, know how far you can go. Uh, you may get better down the track, but don't, don't knock yourself out. If that's as good as your eyes are or as good as your skills are, just stop there, that'll be fine. Uh, maybe next time you can you can go that bit further. At least that's my attitude, right? It's maybe it's excuse for saying, "Oh, bugger it, I can't do this properly." Oh, no, it isn't. Know your skill level, 
and you don't stress because you know I want to do this for fun I want to enjoy this and this has been a really good kit I must say I can't can't highlight you know I cannot more than emphasize how nice this kit is how beautifully detailed it is even though I haven't gone in and done the um, the panel lines yet and I will be doing that probably later on this video you know you can see the lovely all the lovely detail and the, and the etching in there by Airfix and they have done a wonderful job. So this is going to take a tiny pin wash very subtly and I, I won't need to do much to this to really bring it out. I've fully masked up the, um, the bottom of the uh, Skyhawk and um, she's all ready now for um, the top grey paint which will then fix up the problems with the um, the extra bits at the front there, those little uh, those little sections that I had to add on later, which were steps 24 and 25. But that's okay. You probably could have painted them separately and glued them on, but I I want to paint the whole thing anyway, and I'd already scored my panel lines and needed to um, to repaint, so it's a perfect opportunity for that. But what I had forgotten is some little photo etch parts got to go on because in Edward's instructions, um, there's um, there's these little parts that go here on top of there. Now this just happens to be one of the ones that I broke off uh, because there's two little sort of pieces I broke off you can probably see them in the, um, the kit here. There's this top piece here that broke off but that was okay because that allowed me to sand that smooth and then there's this tiny little thing here which I've kept as well. So I'm going to um, put those on. Now I'm going to CA glue them uh, because obviously they're so tiny and, and they're so fine that um, I feel that's going to be the best way. Otherwise I'd have to draw some holes in here and try and put the um, plastic cement on and then leave it and hope they bond. Uh, and they still could be quite fraggle. So um, rather than the little suckers actually falling off on me again, um, or we've broken off, because you know how clumsy I am, um, we're going to CA them. Now I get asked a lot about my wax pencil and people don't really believe me. But um, if you've seen the other videos, you know I play with this and I love this. And I haven't had to use it much with this Edward PE set because everything was pre-painted. But uh, the couple of little parts that I've got to put on now, they're still the, um, still the metal colour. So I don't think they've got a lick of paint on them, which means my little wax pencil is going to work. So let's do that, hey? Now, as I've done before, and as I've said many times, you can't catch PE on your mat. If you do, it's too springy, it's got too much bounce, and your PE bends and it's all bloody horrible and you end up with, with wobbly PE. So, I've already done some. This, um, I think it's a long range fuel tank actually, because that's sort of what those things look like. I've um, put the little hatches that, that need to go on it. And um, they were relatively easy. They went on without any trouble at all. So there you go, so they're done. And these, these came together really well. Um, two halves that you, you had to cement, but um, the fit was so good that there was a tiniest bit of uh, Mr. Surfacer, really not much at all. Basically that is fitted together, or cemented, and sanded. And it's as smooth as a baby's bum. So there you go. No problem with that. Good old airfix. Alright, so what we'll do with uh, Mr. Edward here is we'll Take the PE. Now, the trick that I found if you've only got your cutting board, and this was actually in Edward's instructions, was use their bit of card. This card is firm, so that stops the bounciness of your cutting board, because with your cutting board your knife's going to go in, and it's also got a, quite a lot of springiness, which is, which is handy for all the things you do with plastic, but it's bloody lousy when you're trying to cut tiny little bits of PE. So let's see how we go. We've got to get part um, 22, and we need one of those, so we'll use the, um, I use the razor blade that comes with my PE folding tool, which if you've watched my previous videos, I've found it's much better than buggering up your, um, your X-Acto knife. And it gives you a bit more um, accuracy, at least for me, with my folding. Now, that's cut, right? So we should be able to get the wax pencil and look at that. That tiny little part sitting quite happily on my wax pencil. It's not going anywhere. I'm not going to drop it. And it's not stuck there forever because all I have to do is place it down and turn the wax pencil and it's off, right? And tap it again ever so gently with the wax pencil and it's back on again. It really is that easy, okay? So 
you know, that makes your life. I mean, you try and do that with tweezers or a toothpick with white glue on or even a toothpick with a little bit of CA glue on, you know, you can get in all kinds of dramas. Whereas I've got that quite happily on there. I can sit it over there ready for when I want to go. Now, the other trick I use, of course, if you watch my videos, is slow zap. Now, slow zap has the beauty of taking some time before it goes all, you know, instant gluey. So, um... Mr. Slow Zap gives me a little bit of time with my fumbling fingers to actually get where I want to go and get this thing happening. Now, as usual, I'm not bloody organised. Toothpick. Okay, there's a couple of ways you could have done this. I could have dipped the part in the CA glue and then put it on. Uh, you know, that's can, that can be messy. Um, whereas, especially if I don't get it exactly the right spot and have to move it, then I'll have a smear of CA glue. But if I put the CA glue exactly where I know this has got to sit, right, so there's only glue on the spot All right, and then we come in and this is as close as I can get guys with the apparatus that I have here so um, I hope you can see what we're doing here so I'll come in here with the pencil All right, and leave let me move it around a bit till I get it just how I want it or you can use some pointy device and see you've got that bit of time with the Mr. Zap I've had all that time to get it how I want it. And then once I'm absolutely sure, then I'm going to compress it down. And that even use this just to make sure because basically once you put that bit of pressure on that's where Mr. Zap starts to do his job. You still got a bit of play. Here we go. I think that's right. Probably getting my hands in the way there. Alright so that looks pretty well down the center line for me so I don't know if you can see Alright, here she is. Now, to speed up Mr. Zap, um, although that would be pretty well tacked in there now, but to um, speed him up, all I've got to do is put it underneath a light, which is off camera. Use your imagination. Okay, I'll, I'll edit this and just dissolve this bit. So, um, just give him a little bit of heat off camera. Oh, yeah. do, 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 do. Just hum, you know. And um, done. That's it. So that part, and look, how effortless was that, you know? Like, I used to struggle with PE. As I've said before in my videos, you know, I've stuffed up a few things in the past. But quite frankly, wax pencil, razor blade, a nice firm cutting surface. Glass is best. If you can get a piece of glass, that's the way to go. All right, so I've got another little part here. And again, pretty easy to pick up with my wax pencil. Right, so that is this little sticky up fin antennae type thing. I don't know what the bloody hell it is. You tell me. Somebody, somebody tell me what these bloody things are. But this is a, a little sort of sticky up thing that sits there. And there I've got that piece on using the same method. So um, exactly the same as I did before. I can you close the camera there. It's scary, isn't it? I get up that close. Oh, it's all nose and moustache. Um, so exactly the same thing. Wax pencil. I sort of did it off camera because really... I have to use less light when I'm um, shooting and I can't see. So <laughs> it's, you know, I tried to do it and I shot it and it was just disgusting. Uh, so I put the lights on and did it with my extra strong reading glasses on and I got it pretty well straight away. So, um, you know, it's you don't realise that sometimes it's so hard to illustrate what you're doing when you're trying to do it on camera because it's sort of suddenly it's the pressure. Performance anxiety. Oh dear. But um, no, look, wax pencil works. Love it. Um, occasionally you have to use a bit of tweezers just to do the final tweak. Zap's good because it gives you that time and there you go. Alright, so my secret ingredients, Mr. Zap and Mr. Wax Pencil. And I can't go on about them enough, can I? You're sick of it! I know! Shut up, Harry Udini! Alright, on with some painting. I uh, painted up parts and I'm using this lovely big display case that I had for my, um, my Trumpeter SU-152, which I don't need now unless I'm transporting it. Um, and it's such a good display case, I can't even open the bloody thing. 
Oh, there we go. Okay. It's all right. Just no muscles, Harry Houdini. You need to go back to the gym. You need to go. Oh, you can smell the paint. <laughs> Anyhow, it's um, such a lovely day here today, and, um, I, and I'm taking a bit of time off in the middle of the day after after all the busyness I've had lately. And I thought I would get some um, some panel lights done because it's not the sort of thing I like to do at night time because the fumes will generally send me crazy. At this stage, before I start filling wheel wells with um, with, with the flaps and, and, and the wheels and, and all the landing gear, um, I'm going to try and get a wash in there. Um, that's, that's my theory anyway, that I want to bring that out. And as far as I can tell from all the photos I've seen, basically the inside of all these things is white. And um, actually the inside of that one is supposed to be white as well. So I better get a lick of white paint in there and then I can um, get some, some weathering wash in there. But for the purposes of this video, and so I don't muck you around any longer, because I know you're, you're probably nodding off about now. Wake up! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, let's, 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 um, let's do a bit of panel line stuff, hey? Already now, I've got my um, panel line accent. I'm going to use a black one, which if I use sparingly, should um, should wash out nicely. Um, I've got my odorless thinner, which we've used before. It's like terps, but doesn't smell. But it still is a noxious chemical, as I found. So you do need your windows open, and um, although it does make your eyes water, and it certainly is a lot nicer to use, um, I left my model out overnight when I was doing the SG-152 with the odorless thinner because I couldn't smell it. And then I woke up the next morning with really puffy eyes and I'd obviously had a reaction. But I am quite a little baby and quite sensitive to these things. Anyway, we digress. Let's um, let's give this a go. So I've um, got one of my little mixy containers here for the odorless, so we'll put that out of the way. Uh, what we'll do first is we'll do something simple. So if we bugger it up, which can always happen, um, basically... It's going to be easy to fix. So what I thought I'd do is, you see, uh, see here these um, these these little flaps that go on the back of um, the back of Skyhawk here. Oh, where are we? Camera angles. It's all weird. Uh, on the back of Skyhawk here, there's little little flaps that open there, breaks or something. I don't know. They certainly they're going to be open on mine, and I've I've I'm mirroring my uh, my look and my flap positions on. A photo I've got of one landing on a carrier. I'll, I'll put that at the end of this, but um, you would have seen it before. So, giving this a bit of a shake, it doesn't take much. And what I love about the um, this Tamiya one is you get a little applicator with it. See, so it already comes with a little doodad. So we can uh, we can go straight in. I can make myself some room here. So I can see what the hell I'm bloody doing. Uh, we can go straight in here and um, pop that in all the holes. So it saves me. Save me having to um, wash a brush. So there we go. That's um, that's one. And all I'm doing is um, going into all the recesses. I'm not going to use much because unlike the tanks, unlike when I do the armored vehicles, where you um, you need lots, I'm only going to put a little dab on there because I'm going to take about ninety percent of this off. At least that's the theory. Okay, so she's all dirty now. All right, now um, I probably don't need to wait because really I'm going to rub away. So my theory is I'm only going to use the tiniest bit of odorless thinner. I'm really not going to need much at all. Well, and that tiniest bit ended up being a gargantuan glump. But I've got a whole model to do here. So um, dabbing it on with your cotton bud or Q-tip or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm working at weird angles here so you can see what's going on. Is I'm just going to basically remove as much of that as I possibly can. All right, and then go to the clean side. And there we go. So what have I ended up with? What I should have done is only done one and left the other one. Eh? I'm in my own shadow here. What do you think? That's kind of spiffed them up a bit, hasn't it? And I'll, um, let me have a look here. Where's my extra strong reading glasses? Oh, it always happens, doesn't it? I started, ah, oh, that's better. Now I can see what I'm bloody doing. Oh, goodness me. Needs a little bit of adjusting. Uh, that looks mighty. Nothing wrong with that. And that's all you need. 
Yeah, happy with that. So, um, see, it's brought out all those little recessed holes and um, that's added a little bit of shading there. And the beauty is with this, I can let it dry and if I'm not happy, well I've missed one there, if I'm not happy, um, most of it I can sort of wash out again because my undercoat was my Tamiya, um, sorry, can't think and talk at the same time, can I? No, hey, brain can't engage. Um, my undercoat was the Tamiya lacquer, lacquer, right? And um, although it's acrylic, it's also a lacquer. So it really does make a very impermeable layer that you can work on. Because I can put water-based, you know, hand brush acrylics on top of this, like the um, the Valley Ho or the um, ones I like, the Ammo Mig, and they'll wash off with water. And water doesn't take off the Tamiya lacquer. The only thing that's going to take it off is the thinner. You actually got to use the alcohol-based, and I think it's got some bloody isol, blutal, glocal, something rather horrible. I know whatever it is, it's classified an explosive, and that's why often you can't get those um, those rattle cans actually sent in the mail because they're considered an explosive item. There you go. Shh, don't tell terrorists. Shh. Um, okay, that'll get my bloody video banned, won't it? Yeah. Oh, good. All I've got to do now is go, Allah Akbar! Oh, dear. Now I'm stuffed. Oh, dear. Here comes Asia. Here's the helicopters. Um, if I get carted away in the middle of this video, well, you, you know why. But look, it's, I'm just joshing. Anyhow, they're nice. I think I've got the confidence to keep going. Now, I've got a couple of little... Um, those are uh, little flappy things um, for either side of the... Um, on here on either side of the, the wheels. So I'll do those. So I'll sort of potter on, I'll do a few more, and then we'll come back when I do what is going to be much more subtle work, is I'm going to do the panel lines. We'll see how we go using this method on this aircraft. And here's the result of only a few minutes work. Uh, can you tell the difference? One side, I've got all those lovely, I mean, forget about the shadows, but can you see all the panel lines are nice and dark? They've all been washed out. On this side, you can see, you can see the panel lines because of shadows, but they're not as pronounced. And I've got some, some really nice little effects happening there in all the little lines. And can you see in the, um, the undercarriage? How's the lighting? And you can see on one side, it's lovely. All the little details show, everything's fine. But on the other side, it's just white. So this is really, um, really coming along well. Now, what I did find is two tricks. Um, probably because I'm using too dark a shade. I mean, you'd probably be better off mixing up a, uh, a not, you know, a dark grey. So what I found is don't shake my bottle too much. <laughs> use, use the top part, which is very, very thin, and um, that, that gives me um, um, more, more of the effect I want without overdoing it. And the other thing is, it's bloody hot here today. Um, it's still winter in Australia, and yet we're having a heat wave today. This is like a mild summer's day, or even quite a warm spring day. And um, the humidity is high as well. And... This stuff was drying as fast as I put it on, so I could only do a small area and then wipe it off. Otherwise, I found if I sort of worked too far ahead and then I came back with a cotton bud, it was as dry as a bloody lizard's tongue. It really was. And I had to scrape and scrape and scrape, and I managed to actually break one of the parts off with my scraping. But um, no, it came along well. I'll show you a little bit. I'll, um, I'll do this side here. We'll try and do that to camera, and um, you can see how, how it worked. And it gave me the effect that I wanted. Um, there's, there's heaps of ways of doing this. You know, I've seen people do a really good job with um, pastel chalks and things like that. But um, this was fast, this was easy, this was using skills that I already had, and um, I'm pretty happy. Here we go. Let's uh, give this a try. So, um, sorry, my hand's in the way there. So I've got my little uh, Tamiya thing. Now, just... I know you should get, should get some capillary action, but um, and that does happen. But I'm doing this sort of my method, which is similar to the way I do the tanks. And, and you know, I've seen some guys just like tap on there. Gently tap on a panel line and bingo, you know, it all flows through. See, there you go, there's a bit of capillary action up in there. Let's just do that small area. And then I found, make sure your cotton bud is nice and clean each time. Keep using a clean one. And I um, also found stroking in the direction 
that the aircraft will get wear. Sort of a good trick. See, it's dry already. We've only been doing this for a couple of seconds and it's dry already. Here we go, absolutely bone dry already. So you may have a cooler climate and might get a bit more time to do this than I have, but um, as you can see, I haven't actually scrubbed, and I, <laughs> I only put that on seconds ago, not even a minute. Okay, so um, it's not too bad. It's going to need a bit of touching up, as always. When you try and do this to camera, and because I have to sort of do it off an angle, it doesn't work as well. But you can see the effect. Okay. I'm not lying. I'm not pulling your leg. <laughs> this is this is true. Fair dinkum. Okay, so the effects that I got over there, that's how I achieved them. Now we'll have to go back and do a bit more touching um, because it's as I say, it's pretty hard for me to do this to camera and um, be able to see what I'm doing. But um, I also, as usual, I'm not wearing my extra strong reading glasses, am I? No, no. But anyhow, you get the idea. It's not that hard, and it's kind of working. I'll, I'll keep going. Um, oh, I'll quickly show you. Look there. The inside of these things was really easy, like here. Because I'm using the thin part of this, right? because I didn't actually shake my bottle up too much. It's hardly going to need any cotton budding at all. Right? Whoa, you bumped the bloody iPad. It's an earthquake, an earthquake. Well, we had two last week. Amazing, earthquakes in Australia. So uh, that's about all it took, you know. It really... Um, it was that easy, and that's going to require the tiniest bit of cotton budding out. Oh, look at that thermometer back there. Look, um, it's been a bit of a stinker of a day, but um, we have got quite a bit done on the Skyhawk, and I'm really happy with how those panel lines are coming along. So I'll get that finished next time, and we'll get the undercarriage on and a few other things and some decals. It'll nearly be finished. All right, so until next time, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Udeni. Mm-hmm.